Join me in making a new junk journal planner for 2023 out of a simple grocery paper bag. And also I would like to introduce my newest kit, Victorian Steampunk. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So for this past year, I have been using this style of planner made from packaging. This year, I would like to use my favorite kind of soft cover made from grocery paper bags. I've shared this technique in previous videos, so I will quickly explain how I got to this stage. So this is what the grocery bag looks like in the beginning. I always start by pulling apart the bottom of the paper bag. Once I have this part open like this, I will fold it out. So now it's basically just a long tube. Then I need to figure out, of course, how big do I need my cover to be. In my case, I oriented myself on an A4 paper folded in half. So this is an A4 paper folded in half makes A5. And I wanted my cover to just be a little bit wider on all sides. I also, of course, have to take into account how wide do I want my spine to be. And in my case, I oriented myself by looking at my previous planners. These are almost seven centimeters and they have three signatures inside. So for this paper bag, I decided to go with seven centimeters and I will have four signatures inside, so four months. So the plan is to have three of these same type of junk journal planners for this year, which then makes, of course, 12 months. So when you look at this, my paper bag needs to be this measurement. So this is exactly what I cut out from the bag, just like this. That meant that I have the fold here on the bottom, which I left because it just strengthens my cover. The top one was cut off. And I also cut off these handles. And then the only thing I did was to sew around the whole cover with a small running stitch. So this is where I am now. If you don't want to sew, you simply glue all around. So I want to finish making this cover. I want to sew in the signatures and I'm going to use this Kit Victorian Steampunk for my first month. So let me share this new kit, Victorian Steampunk, with you first electronically, and then I will tell you a little bit more about it. Yeah. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows. If this is a mistake, I know about tomorrow. I don't want to fight no more, because I don't feel the need no more, no. Just want to make it stop Maybe it's something in the water Or maybe we just hit the end of the road Right now it doesn't even matter It's too late not to let it go And that's why I Wish you the best and say goodbye You start to get dressed and then Say we didn't. I was your first love, and you were my first one. Cheers to all the memories, the venom and the remedies. Yeah, promise I won't forget. Yeah. Maybe it's something in the water, or maybe we just hit the end of the road. Right now it doesn't even matter. It's too late not to let. Just 
So my goal for this kit was to showcase the steampunk theme in a more feminine and less grungy way to appeal to those of you who usually shy away from this theme. I again paired up with my friend Ray who made all of these incredibly detailed drawings. Aren't they just fabulous? I mean, just look at this. All these details. I'm really blown away. And I really think Ray outdid herself with this theme and I can tell how much fun she had making these images come to life. So Ray is also the artist who has created illustrations for some of my previous kits like Paris Tea Party, My Heart is in Egypt, On My Desk and Art Deco Dreams, all of which are available as downloads in my shop. Thank you again so much Ray for partnering with me for this kit. I will link Ray's Instagram for you in the description box in case you want to check it out. You will probably also have noticed if you are familiar with my previous planner kits that this one is reduced. It was really getting out of hand and I was designing around 40 pages per month, which was just too time consuming. I needed to simplify the formats and stick to basics. But on the flip side, I'm offering all of the downloads in US letter size as well. So let's put these away for the moment and continue working on our cover. I want to put fabric both on the outside and the inside of my cover. Instead of fabric, you could of course also just use printables or book pages or whatever you want. I love the texture of using fabric and it just makes it soft as well. I really like that. And these two beautiful pieces of fabric are, many of you will notice, of course, Tim Holtz. These are from a shop in Germany. It's called Quilting For You. They have such an amazing collection of Tim Holtz fabrics as well as other fabrics. And I was just blown away by their selection. That was also where I got the fabric from that I used for the journal I made for Louisa Heinzel for Defemerember. So you can find a link to the shop below. This is not the last time you will be hearing of this shop. I am in contact with the owner, Romy. She's such a delight and I am so happy to promote her shop. If Germany is too far away from where you live and shipping is too expensive, please just search for Tim Holtz fabric online and I'm sure you will find another shop near you that will have these beautiful fabrics. This one, I believe, has actually already been discontinued. So I don't know if you'll be able to find this exact one, but there are so, so many beautiful ones. I don't want to do a whole lot to these. I do want to add just a little bit of grunge. This already has beautiful grunge. I didn't do anything to this. This one here, I think definitely needs a little bit more, but I want it to be subtle. So all I'm going to do is use some coffee. I keep this in my refrigerator and I'm just going to spray a little bit on both of these fabrics. I think this is the one I will be using on the outside. Let's put that one on the side to dry and add some more coffee on this one. This is what they look like once they have mostly dried. I think that already looks really nice. And I thought I could leave it alone, but I just can't. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little more to them. I have the Distress Oxide Spray in Weathered Wood. If I wouldn't have this and I wanted to add some more interest, I would use thin Down Acrylic Paint or Watercolor. This here just makes it easier. Let's see if I can just, yes. So I'm just going to use the nozzle and drip it on the fabric. And the other color I want to add is Picket Fence. So this is a beautiful white opaque distress stain. If I didn't have this, I would use either gesso or white acrylic paint thinned down. And again, I'm going to just use the nozzle. And 
And on the butterfly one, I'm going to the same thing with frayed burlap and again, the picket fence. Note to self, do not use picket fence distress spray stain on fabric because it's useless. <laughs> You, you can't see any of it. Like I didn't even put it there in the first place. Also here, like it's, it's just not existent. It's quite fascinating. <laughs> so instead I'm going to use my thinned down white gesso. And hopefully that will give me better results. I'm assuming it will because of course the gesso has acrylic inside which I think will be visible when it dries. So these have dried and as you can see, they are still white. So the gesso definitely works. The white acrylic paint will work of course as well. Some of the blobs are now craters, as you can see. That's very easy to do. You just dry it partially so that the skin on the outside is dry. And then you take a kitchen towel or something similar and press onto that bubble a few times. And then all that will be left is the part that has already dried on your surface. And I, I love those kind of craters. And this is what the butterfly looks one. And you see here how the great fur lab has oxidized with the yellow green edge around the blobs. Next, I'm going to glue the fabric onto my cover. So I'll do the inside first. I don't think it matters which one you do first. I'm using textile glue and I'm going to thin it a little bit with some water. And I'm going to apply it with a brush. I think I thinned it out a bit too much. As I plan to stitch around it again, once both covers are on, I'm not too worried about going all the way out to the edges. But obviously, if you're not going to sew, then please make sure you go all the way. It's easier to just do one side first. I made a bit of a mess here, but it doesn't matter since that's going to get covered also. So then I'll just turn it around and do the other side. And I'll do the exact same thing for the other side. So after it was dry, I took it to my sewing machine and did some messy stitching all the way around the edges. And now we are ready to sew in the signatures. I have already prepared four signatures for my four months. These last three are still completely plain. They're just a variety of coffee dyed papers. I have four A4 pages per signature. And in between each signature, I have usually two pieces of something else. In this case, it's an acetate bag. Here's a glassine bag that's been embossed as well. And here's another vintage envelope from the bank. This one is very cool. This one has like an old receipt, another paper bag. Another paper bag. Yep. And this one here, there's another paper bag. A little score sheet here. And the other side of the paper bag. So really super plain. And the first one actually has five A4 papers because I have six weeks in here just because I wanted to add the end of December and the beginning of February as well. 
I did have the last week of December in my other planner, but I'm kind of done with that planner and I haven't been good about using it just because of all the December stuff going on. So I wanted a fresh start. And as you can see, I've already added my Victorian steampunk papers to them. So this is going to be my title page. As you can see here, there's already a little bit of white stenciling here with the picket fence. So on paper, it's really nice. So I spray it through the stencil on another page and then just put the stencil like that. And I really love these random impressions. On various places, I added some lace and fabric page tabs. This is a scrap that I had left from Louisa. And maybe I'll show you the rest of that signature when it's in the journal. I think that will be easier to flip through. So I'm just going to sew these in. So they're going to be in here like this. I think I'm going to keep them a centimeter apart and I'm going to stitch them in with, I think a six hole stitch where I just go up on one side and then down on the other side and then tie them here on the bottom. So this is again a tip from Louisa Heinzel. Instead of measuring your spine and everything with a ruler, just use a sheet of graph paper. If you work in centimeters, this is the easiest thing you can do because two of these columns make a centimeter. So I just have to count 14 to make my seven centimeter spine. So I will cut that out. It's already the height that I need. So I've made my grid. Four signatures is a bit of a weird number. Usually I would do three or five. So I decided to go with one and a half centimeters in between the signatures. So I spaced those out evenly. Then I folded it in half to find out where the center is. I measured three equal distances from the center on one side and on the other side. So that means I have seven holes in each signature. Then I also folded this grid on one of the lines like this so I could use it as a template for my signatures. So after making sure that they are together the way I want them together, I attached the template with washi tape to my pages. I also made a mark here so that it would be the same on each page. And I took my all and I went through those cross points. And I did that with all of my signatures. So then I need to make sure that my template is centered. I can just hold the two edges so that they're flush and then make sure this lays how it, I would want it to be in the journal. And now I can just clip that on with some paper clips or some binder clips because the washi is not gonna hold on the fabric. And I'll make the same holes here on the spine now. I'm putting a piece of packaging, some foam underneath to make it easier to pierce through the holes. Then we can take the template off and I can start sewing in the signatures. I chose gray embroidery thread to go with my papers for the first month. I took three lengths, the length of a signature, and I'm just going to start from the bottom inside, uh, my first row of holes, and then just weave myself out, in, out, in, out, in. And when I'm on the top, I'll just go back down and then make a knot on the inside here between the last and the second to last hole and do the same for the other three signatures. So all four signatures are bound in. You see the four rows here. I think I might just leave this as it is. Of course, you could cover it if you'd want to. I even found something that would that would probably work perfectly. On the ephemera page three, there's this really long shape here with the girl and she would, by coincidence, fit over that spine and the threads perfectly. So I could cover it up with this if I wanted to, or just another piece of fabric. Let me show you from the top. It looks like this. So they are evenly spaced. It's a round spine, which I prefer to having it all stiff. 
I like the flexibility of it. There's plenty of room to grow. I love that. So let me show you the first signature now. So here's the monthly overview. And I'm assuming you noticed in the calendar pages when I showed you the digital versions, I don't have any dates because I want you to be able to mix and match them as you like. I want you to be able to use this month, any month of the year, and then just uh, handwrite or stamp your own dates. So I used a stamp up here and I hand wrote the dates here. So then I have this fun envelope here. Here's my 10K step tracker. By the way, I've edged all of my papers with iced spruce. Here again, I dated these myself with a stamp. Obviously, it would be easy to handwrite the dates. So that's week one, starting with January 1st here on Sunday. And I just realized I made something weird, but it doesn't matter. I think I was not meant to put anything here because I thought this page would be the corresponding one to this one, but it's fine. I'll just use this one. I'll write my to-do list and my gratitude here. I can add a piece of scrap paper to glue on it if I want to or write directly onto the page. This is one of these cool guitar string pockets from Louise. So I just sewed on the flap. I sprayed some, what is it, uh, stormy sky through a stencil here. So the fabric tab here, which is the same fabric as on the outside. This is week two. And I also like the quotes that are in here. So this one says, steampunk is nostalgia for what never was. Love that. Here we have, the world can be amazing when you're slightly strange. <laughs> This one says, the world of reality has its limits. The world of imagination is boundless. Oh, and here we all have time machines. They are called memories. This is one of my most favorite pages. I just love her so much. She is so cool. And there's the next week. She's also super cool. Again, I added some lace here as a tab. And there's the next week. And that's the last full week. Here again, I did some spraying through a stencil and added this paper bag here, which I have also stenciled through. Just added a, another page tab here with some lace. Here's the other side of that envelope and this goes up until February 5th. This is the other one that I really, really love. And that's the last page. Not sure yet if I will put my book summary one here. I still have not been able to read a book. I read, I read half a book, but that doesn't count yet. So either I'll put that here or maybe it would now actually would make much more sense to put it here on the very last page of the journal. I love how this feels like it's so flexible, yet it is sturdy. This is like my perfect combination for a cover. I love the feel of it. I could just leave the cover like this. I love the way this looks. But on the other hand, I have some cool ephemera. So maybe I could add something on the front. I'm, I'm really on the fence about that. Let me cut this one out and then we can play with it and make a decision. So I have this cut out. This is printed on matte photo paper, 110 GSM. I'm not sure yet how to place this, if at all. Let me just put a book or something underneath so this lays more even. So alone, I think it does not work. It needs something else. The one thing I bought myself for Christmas <laughs> are these cool numbers. I just love how fat they are. <laughs> The, the shape is just so cute. And it's the Sizzix die number 665367. And I have here the numbers 23 for 2023. And I just used my 200 GSM cardstock. And one idea I had was to maybe put the 23 like this, but to cut it off, I think you can still tell that it's 23. 
even if we cut the right end off it definitely gives it more interest i could also just leave it on then i also cut out two of these fabulous leaves which are from this die so this is sizzix thinlets die 665559 i've had this one for a while now and i love it dearly and we could put these for example up here but i'm wondering if i would leave them white i mean the contrast is beautiful but maybe it's too much of a contrast i'm very intrigued to put some weathered wood on these i'm gonna do that because otherwise i'll always think maybe it would have looked better <laughs> Right, you have to just go for it. If I hate it, I can always cut more white ones. So I'll add some water first. And then I'll add some of this. And then I'll take it off again. So it should really just be very light. Oh yeah, I love it. Oh, how cool does that look? Oh, this is beautiful. I'm gonna dry this and then let's see what it looks like. So I'm really happy I added the spray. It just kind of dampened it a little bit, but they still come out enough. Now I'm thinking I want to sew around the tag and I think I'll sew right over the numbers. So I'll glue those on, on, on the tag first and then sew right over that. And then I can still decide whether I want to cut these outer parts off or not. So I sewed around it twice. And as you can see, I left the full numbers on it. I think it looks really cool with the sewing through it. And I already glued everything down and I only put glue here and here so that this is a pocket and I could put something in there. I do think it needs a few black splatters. So that's what I will do now. So this is what it looks like once it has all dried. I'm super happy with this cover. This still here needs something because obviously this is our first page, now for January. Even though it has this gorgeous hat here, I do also want to add something else. I was thinking of this beautiful dragonfly steampunk lady. Yeah, I'm going to fussy cut her and then we'll see what else to add. So after having cut her out, and putting her on the page, I can see that she doesn't really come out a lot. So I'm going to lighten up the background by adding a whole bunch of white gesso splatters. That's a really easy way to get some more contrast to make your focal point stand out if your backdrop just is too dark like mine is. Just concentrate your splatters mostly in the area where you're going to glue your focal point so it looks a bit crazy right now i have dried it i would say maybe like three quarters of the way i just want to show you again the crater technique so you just press really really hard best to change the position of your kitchen towel and then you get rid of any of the excess paint creating these craters here here I just think they look super cool. And the added bonus is of course that it greatly reduces your drying time as well. Now she stands out a lot better. Very happy with this now. And as final touches to the page, I added the word January. It's quite dimensional. Those are die cuts made out of cardboard. And this is another set I splurged on for my own Christmas present. <laughs> this is Sizzix set 665924, which has two sizes of alphabet and number. And these here are the larger ones, which are one inch. Super fun. And I also added some clear embossing powder with my Distress embossing pen and I added it to several parts. So first of all, of course, to the dragonfly wings, but also up here to these goggles and to these large goggles there. So I think that's just such a fun element. 
If you don't have clear embossing powder, you could also do this with glossy accents or like a shiny Mod Podge or something like that. See what you have and try it out. It's super fun. So I am super happy with this first signature for January. I really hope you like this feminine steampunk kit. You can find all the links in the description box below. Thank you again, Ray, for this amazing partnership and your beautiful drawings. Have fun with this kit. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah. Here's to the good days. Here's to the sorrows. This is a mistake. I know about tomorrow I don't want to fight no more Cause I don't feel the need no more, no Just want to make it stop